Have you ever worked on a project with somebody that you really respected or that you really, really liked and they seemed sort of like a celebrity that was sort of out of reach, but then for whatever reason you got to work with them and it was amazing? That's totally what this episode is. What's up everybody, I'm Matt Brody and this is Simply Must Go and today Oh man, today I got an episode I am I am so stoked about, I can't even tell you. So today, we are going back to my roots, back to the YJ. For all of you guys that subscribed when I first got Sue, my 1992 Jeep YJ that we did the Jurassic Park Jeep conversion on, this video is for you. All my YJ fans, whether you just bought a YJ, whether you've had a YJ for a while, whether it's stock, whether it's built up, doesn't matter. I think you're gonna love this video. So today we're gonna to bring you a bunch of YJ upgrades and mods from some of my favorite YouTube creators that focus primarily on YJs. So we are gonna hear from Dan from Flawed Off-Road, we're gonna hear from Power Addicts, and we're gonna even hear from Dale of Jeep Solid. I'm like a little schoolgirl over here. I'm just so excited about all of them. And we're gonna share with you some of our favorite Jeep mods and accessories for your Jeep YJ. I'm gonna go first and I'm gonna share with you two of my must-do mods for your Jeep YJ, particularly if you're gonna be taking it on the trails, off-road, that kind of stuff. And then, at the end, I'm gonna share with you a bonus upgrade that I think you'll get a lot out of. The very first mod that I'm gonna share with you is actually one of the very first mods that I did to my Jeep when I first got it, and that is adding boomerang shackles to the front and rear. Boomerang shackles are actually larger than the stock shackles, and so they're actually gonna give you a little bit of lift, anywhere from like a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch. It's not much, but it's definitely some. So the reason you'd want boomerang shackles is actually because the stock shackles, if you get too flexed out, have the potential to sort of invert and get bound up, meaning when they flex out, they end up, instead of coming back out the way they're supposed to, they end up coming in like this and getting all bound up. The boomerang shackles have an arch in them, so they look like a boomerang, and it actually keeps that from being able to happen as long as they're installed correctly. This is a fairly cheap upgrade, and the benefits, I think, are huge, particularly if you're taking your Jeep off-road or even on some minor trails. And it's really not a hard upgrade. You can do this yourself in your garage, though, full disclosure, I chose to have a shop install mine just because I was pretty new at doing this, didn't really have the right tools yet, and didn't want to mess it up. But I will say the shop that installed mine actually installed them backwards or upside down. I can't remember which. But anyway, I had to get that taken care of. So be very mindful of the correct orientation. This is how they should look in the front, and this is how they should look in the back. So make sure that when you install them, this is the correct orientation. It's a little counterintuitive. Now my second favorite Jeep mod is actually a Jeep mod I took care of myself. I was super proud of myself for being able to do this. I did have to take the Jeep to my brother's shop because getting up on a lift definitely makes this project easier, but it is something you can do in your garage, you know, with a, with a regular jack and jack stands and things like that. And that is the central axle disconnect delete or what it's more commonly referred to as the CAD or the CAD vac delete. Now, what this does is when Jeep originally made the YJ, they made the front axles into a three-piece axle. So the driver's side is a full axle, and then the passenger side is actually two axles, and they split, and the, the passenger side wheel free spins continuously. They did it as some sort of misguided reasoning for lowering gas mileage, but it really, in effect, did nothing. It just sort of appeased the government. The problem is, is that you've now got two separate pieces there, and there's a ring that slides over and connects those two pieces of axle together when you put it into four-wheel drive, and that's what engages the other, the passenger side wheel um, past the differential. Now, it's not a huge deal, but the trouble is that whole system, Jeep decided to use vacuum lines to engage that system. And obviously these Jeeps are now getting into the point where they're 30 years old, and vacuum lines just don't hold up. So unless you've replaced all of your vacuum lines, there's a really good chance that you go to throw your Jeep into four-wheel drive and those vacuum lines fail and you don't actually have four-wheel drive. You have two-wheel drive, sort of three-wheel drive. Regardless, it's not optimal when you're already dealing with open differentials. So there's three ways that I know of to do the CAD delete. The first way is with a cable system. And so basically you're replacing the vacuum lines with a pull cable that you install 
in the cab of the Jeep and when you put it into four wheel drive, you pull the cable and it pulls that ring over and connects the two axles and bada boom, you're done. There have been some issues with those. It's not ideal and I don't like the idea of adding extra things into the cab, particularly when I'm trying to keep a very stock look for something like this. The other way to do it is the way that I did it, which is to take out the entire option of that ring sliding and permanently mount that ring in the orientation that locks those axles together. There's really no downside to that other than that it's still a mechanical piece there, but there's no movement anymore. There's a, a hook that kind of locks everything into place. It's a very simple project to do. Uh, and I, I actually have an entire tutorial on exactly step-by-step -step how to do this, and I will link it right here. So if this is a mod that you're interested in doing, feel free to link this. I'll also link it at the very end of the video so that you can check it out then. The other way to do it is to do a full axle swap and put in, I think it's either an XJ or a TJ front axle, and just remove the whole option of being a two-piece axle altogether. A lot of more serious off-roaders will choose that if they haven't already upgraded their entire front axle and rear axle to something much bigger. But those are sort of the three main ways. The way I did it was fairly cheap. Um, I think I got the kit from Morris 4x4 and it was probably around 60 bucks. And it took me maybe three hours to install knowing absolutely nothing about how to do it. So those are really the first two mods that I did to my Jeep, and I'm super glad that I did them. That said, Dan from Flawed Off-Road, and by the way, if you haven't checked out Flawed Off-Road, his YJ is so sick. He does all the custom fabrication for it and builds it up like I'm, I'm, I want another YJ just so I can build my YJ to be like his. So if you haven't watched it, they also just did a sick trip to Moab, and it's amazing. I love his channel. I love his Jeep. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. But Dan, I'd love to hear what you have to say because I think you've got better advice than I do. Hey, thanks, Matt. So everybody, my name's Dan. I run the YouTube channel Flawed Off-Road. This right here is my 1991 Jeep YJ Wrangler. She's a chunky old girl, kind of a rock crawler. So I've owned it since 2013 and I've learned a ton of stuff about these YJs along the way. And I want to share a couple of my favorite mods with you guys. So when people ask me what's the first thing they should do to their Jeep when they get it, my answer doesn't always make them so happy because I tell them drivability issues. And the biggest one that makes the biggest difference on these things is your leaf spring bushings. Pretty much every YJ that I've ever seen that isn't on a lift is still rocking the factory rubber leaf spring bushings. Kind of like this one. And these things suck. They don't pivot like how the poly ones do. This is what you want is the poly bushings and greasable shackles so you can keep everything moving nice and good. These rubber ones, all the more movement they get is how much you can get this rubber to twist. It's going to be a little bit of a chore to change them out. Some of your bolts will probably be rusted to the sleeves and you might have to cut them out, press the bushings out. But I promise you the difference that this makes is so worth it. Make your Jeep run better guys first and I promise you'll be happier with it. If you have a 4 liter or if you have at least a 91 and newer with the plastic gas tank, Jeep had a factory option that was 20 gallon or 15 gallon but the dirty little secret is they're both the exact same tank and what they did was put a little restrictor tube in the vent to keep you down at 15 gallons unless you paid them for that option. And it literally takes about 10 minutes to trim it down and get 20 gallons out of your Jeep. So if your wheel opening isn't modified, you probably have one of these factory covers here. You're going to have to pull that off of there. And if you look, you've got two things going to your fuel tank and this one is your vent. So this is the one you're going to want. You're going to have to remove that clip. There's a piece of plastic tubing in here that's probably eight inches long. And you grab onto it with needle nose pliers, pull it out. And then all you have to do is trim about four inches off of it, reinsert it, put this hose back on, and you've got a 20 gallon tank. Since we're on the subject of inexpensive mods and fuel tanks, if you have a YJ, you know that the flip down plate sucks. And when you try to gas up, that plate tries to push up on the handle. I have actually had the handle fall out and spray gas everywhere. So my buddy came up with this idea and he gave it to me drawer slider and if you want to know everything you need to do this i actually did a video about this whole thing it really takes no time at all so another super inexpensive mod i did this is out of a gm slash chevy silverado from the early 2000s probably cost me ten dollars at the junkyard and i also grabbed the little sensor that goes up by the grill and it's installed under my fender so it's kind of nice having the auto dim 
and the temperature and compass mirror in an old beater like this. This one isn't gonna be so cheap or free. On the i6, the exhaust comes down right here and crosses under the transmission and it's the first thing you're gonna hit on racks when you're going off-road. So what you can do, is you can buy this downpipe from a Jeep TJ and it goes around the front of the oil pan and sends your exhaust down that side. Now it is a little bit bigger tube, so you're gonna have to get a step down like that, but it's gonna save you from smashing your exhaust that goes beneath the transmission. Again, I don't know if the 4.2 or the 2.5 had that exact style, but mine did, and it was literally the first thing I damaged when I went off-road. The other drivability issue that makes the world of difference on these Jeep YJs is the track bars, or more like the lack of them. Throw them suckers out. I know that a lot of people are gonna argue back and forth about this, and actually I made a video all about all the pros and cons of removing them, but it boils down to this. They bind your suspension, they make the Jeep ride rougher, they don't really do anything good for you. And if you remove yours and you have some kind of issue that comes up from it or your handling goes to crap, it's about a 110% chance that it's not the track bar that caused it, you've got other issues, whether it's your bushings or something else in your steering. So Matt, thank you so much for having me on here, but I simply must go get some work done on this Jeep. So I'll talk to you later. Dan, those were absolutely awesome tips and mods. I really, really appreciate you being on the channel. It means so much to me. Next, we're gonna hear from Power Addicts. Now, I have watched Power Addicts channel since I got the YJ. It was probably the first place I went to to start looking for how to maintain the Jeep, how to do this, how to do that, upgrades, mods, custom stuff. That channel, dude's a mad genius when it comes to making things work from nothing. Like, you got to check it out. So he's got some awesome tips on how to save you a whole bunch of time and money on a lift kit. What's up, everyone? Chuck from Power Addicts. Today, we're on Simply Must Go. Matt hit me up and said, hey, man, would you like to shoot a little video drop on my channel? I'm like, you know what? That'd be a great idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one of my favorite mods I did to my Jeep here. And I'm going to tell you one little mod that I don't care for. How's that? And maybe a little bonus tip at the end of it. All right, let's get on with my favorite mod that I've made so far, and we'll touch a little bit of detail on that. So there's my 1991 Jeep Wrangler YJ sitting on about a total of about five inches of lift. With three inches of body lift, which the body lift is on there whenever I bought the Jeep itself. Being that typically that the body mounts are so rusty and crusted and potentially breaking bolts, I've never taken it out, so we'll just live with that. <clears throat> put the fenders on there but my favorite mod that I've done was the lift the junkyard lift I have about hundred fifty dollars in the lift now how did I get that lift so cheap simple I go to the junkyard and I find the parts doing the junkyard style so what you got to do is on your front leaves right here this leaf right here that is out of an S10 your GMC Sonoma's S10 S S15s and stuff that leaf right there comes out of an S10 or S15s. Buy your new U-bolts, Rubicon Express U-bolts. Replace some U-bolts when you do your lift. The rear leaf pack, stock YJ leaf, right here, S10 leaf. Notice how much thicker the S10 leaves are. That's where you get your lift from. Whenever you do your lift, you'll take out this leaf right here and from the uh, Jeep pack. Put this one in. They'll give you about two to between two to three inches of lift, depending on how your other leads are in the pack. And one thing I want to tell you, do not do. Do not stack two GM packs in here, two GM leads. You just will not like it. It will ride like a log wagon, they'll bottom out your shocks, all that stuff. You just want one leaf from the S10 package. This leaf right here is the second leaf coming out of the S10 pack. And up here, this right here, is the main leaf that come out of the S10 pack. What you do with your main leaf, where it comes up here and it wraps around for your bushing, on the main pack out of the S10, you'll cut the ends of it off, cut this eye off, put them underneath there, put your new U-bolts in, and you'll get about two to three inches of lift, depending on what kind of condition the leaves are in to begin with. Now, like I said, front and rear, get the new U-bolts, but also you'll get the centering pins for the GM leaves, for your S10, S15, Sonoma's, whatever. Get the centering pins, new centering pins, for those leads, not for the Jeeps. But I'll explain that in the video if you guys head over to my channel and check that out. Now, I did mention I was going to tell you guys my least favorite mod. It is because it was rather pointless and it was, a, it was a major headache to do it. Let me tell you. Now, my least favorite mod would be the sound bar. That doesn't make a bit of sense, does it? 
not the soundbar itself but what I did to the soundbar now in this video I showed how to you know do the lighting do the wiring stuff like that and wired into the system but I just had because I can never leave well enough alone had to have bigger speakers so I hacked and cut until I, the factory four inch hole out until I got these five or sevens put in there was it worth it not really because I didn't get enough sound difference by putting those bigger speakers in to justify one the aesthetic looks two the cutting and the modifications I had to do to make it happen now if I give you some grills over top of this it would look a lot better but in the end I should have just put the four inch in and put bigger speakers elsewhere inside the tub now, some of y'all might recognize this part right here coming off the top of an AC compressor this came off of a Jeep Cherokee and I have hacked modded a little bit for a particular purpose onboard air project put in air compressor on my jeep i told you i'd give you all a little tech tip here it is i know what's a boot got to do with a tech tip see whenever you got any kind of worn out shoes or boots whatever tennis shoes shoe strings they're priceless so what's so special about them right there whenever i work on cars jeeps whatever it is i'm maybe working on you can take it and tie these hoses up out of the way, spark plug wires, wiring harness, drive shaft, whatever. If you need to, uh, even your brake calipers when you're doing your brake jobs and stuff. Shoe strings, boot strings, whatever can be a huge help whenever you need an extra set of hands to hold stuff out of the way. There you go. Something super simple and we throw them away all the time. Matt, I really appreciate your invitation on your Simply Must Go channel. All you Simply Must Go fans, appreciate your time. Peace. Later, y'all. Dude, you are absolutely amazing. I appreciate it so much. Now we're gonna hear from maybe one of my favorite channels of all time, Dale from Jeep Solid. He has been absolutely instrumental in helping me learn how to maintain my Jeep and do a lot of the, the repairs and the work on it myself. Every week he's putting out a video that is helpful and you can search all of his content and if you have a question about how to do something on your Jeep YJ, I pretty much guarantee you he has a video with exactly how to do that. So Dale, thank you just for being you, but I can't wait to hear what you have to say and what mods you're gonna do first. Hey Matt, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. So my three favorite mods. Well, I've really been racking my brain about this and then I thought, okay, if I could only do three mods to a Jeep, what would they be and in what order? Number one would definitely be a good winch and preferably one without a uh, frayed cable, need to replace that. But winches like this have gotten me out of many sticky situations. I've been stuck in the snow, stuck in the mud on the side of the road, down a little culvert that I couldn't get out of. Winches have definitely proven their worth to me. So yeah, a winch for sure, because there are many occasions where I would still be stuck on the trail out in the woods somewhere. If I didn't have a winch, something just to pull me out, give me the little nudge I need to get unstuck. My second favorite mod, or the second most important mod I think you need to do on these Dana 30s, these old YJs, you need a locking differential. Uh, having the open differential on this, you get one wheel up in the air like this and it'll just spin and you're stuck. That's the second most important thing I would like to do to my Jeep. I'm going to be doing that on Project Kiwi here in the near future. The third most important mod I think you can make to your Jeep would be a little bit of lift and some oversized tires. Is that two mods? I think that's actually two mods. So I would say a little bit of lift. Give yourself a little bit more ground clearance so you can get over obstacles, rocks, that kind of thing. Just make you that much more able off-road. My red JK chip, no lift. Project OJ 1992 YJ, two and a half inches of lift and 31 inch tires. And Project Kiwi, 1994 Jeep Wrangler YJ, three and a half inches of lift with 32 inch tires. So there you go. If I could only do three mods, I think I would pick those in that order. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the trail. Again, Dale, thank you so much. It was an absolute honor to have you on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much. It has been awesome to have you here. Now, I did promise one final little add-on. One of the things that I have absolutely hated about my YJ is the cup holder situation. The stock console cup holders are trash. Most of the aftermarket console cup holders are trash. I've gone through and I've bought the plastic cup holders that mount to the dash. Those are trash. They just, all of it just sucks. 
until I found Dog Fox Industries and their metal cup holders. Those things are absolutely phenomenal. Now, at the time of this recording, they're actually closed because the owner's hiking the Appalachian Trail, which I think is also super cool. But when he gets back from hiking that, the shop's gonna open. Not only are gonna they keep selling the cup holders, but they're gonna be selling a whole bunch of other really cool YJ mods and upgrades and parts and things like that. So I, I cannot stress enough how much better his cup holders are than any cup holders I've seen for the YJ out there. So if you are tired of spilling your drink on yourself, go check out Fox Dog Industries cup holders and you won't be sorry. All right guys, that is gonna do it for this video. I really appreciate you hanging in there. I hope you found some of these mods, some of these upgrades really useful, really helpful. If you did, leave them down in the comments below. Tell me which ones you didn't know about, which ones you really appreciated. And if you have mods and upgrades that you think we left out, leave those down in the comments below. Maybe we'll make another video talking specifically about those. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell of freedom so you get notified of new episodes. I've got a bunch of other cool stuff coming out, a bunch of other collaborations with some great channels, talking about some of the JKU upgrades we've done, other things that we're gonna do with the YJ, the new Overland trailer, some big adventure trips that we're going on. It's just, there's so much going on, you don't wanna miss it. I'm just telling you right now. You snooze, you lose. So hit the bell, hit subscribe, hit like, and we will see you in the next video.